back to scream out her name. Ready? One, two, three. Give it up for Connie and Bethy. Okay, I'm tired now. I'm ready to go home. Don't want to do this shit. Oh. Well, we have been out there getting teased all night long because we are the white faction over there. And I'm going to make you laugh now because guess what I am? I am a stay-at-home mom. How, how stereotypical is that? Oh, which means, of course, that I have no life. Oh, wait, wait. I do have a life. Let's see. I'm a cook. I'm a maid. I'm a therapist. I'm a chauffeur. And I'm a blow-up doll. <laughs> My husband and I went to a Rockets game a couple of days ago, and um, I gotta tell you guys, I am so loud at the Rockets games, okay? I scream, and I, I, I holler, and heart was going up for a three, and I was screaming, and I was cheering him on, and this woman sitting in front of me turns around and goes, shh, at a Rockets game? Are you kidding me? Shh, you don't go shh. At a Rockets game, if you want to go, shh, you go to the movies, you go to the theater. Why don't you go to the library and see if it's appropriate to go, shh, at a Rockets game. <laughs> anyway, but my husband is one of those guys who screams to me, gentlemen, can y'all hear me? I was loud down there. Gentlemen. Do y'all scream at the TV when sporting events are on? Yep. Do you really? Okay. Now, I'm not talking about like uh, like a party or something like that. When it's just your immediate family, are you screaming at the TV? Yeah. Yes. If you are, then I got to tell you, your wife loves nothing more than to come up and tell you they can't hear you. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> So Christmas just passed, and I got a diffuser for Christmas, okay? Does anybody, does everybody know what a diffuser is? It's this thing that makes your room smell good, and you put essential oils in it. So I'm getting ready to go to bed, and I make this nice little la la lavender and jasmine. This is going to be peaceful. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to go to sleep. And my husband goes and adds a half a bottle of nutmeg to it because it's an aphrodisiac. Okay, guess what nutmeg does? It makes you cough. Okay? Cough. Yeah, that, that's conducive to being horny. Coughing. <laughs> so the next night, he checked Google and found that Lang Lang is also an aphrodisiac. Guess what Lang Lang does? Smells like wet dog. <laughs> Okay, wet dog. Now, I didn't have a good time, but the dogs had a great time. <laughs> okay, so the next night, he, he gets the mix right, okay? We're not coughing. The dogs are, are, the dogs are, are calmed down, and here come the hands. And I squeeze his thumb to tell him, not tonight. I haven't had a good night's sleep in two weeks. And, or two days. And so I, I squeeze his thumb, and he sees this as a go sign. It is so obvious that this is a stop sign. I mean, seriously, squeezing your thumb, is that a go sign or a stop sign? I'm asking. He says it's you a go You know what? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of stupidity in the male of the psyche, uh, it's just mind-boggling. Speaking of stupid, this is what he says to me last week, okay? He says, okay, honey, it's finally happened. Your boobs are now smaller than your stomach. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, his funeral's next Tuesday. Y'all should come. <laughs> But I got even with him. I pulled a prank on him. Okay? This is the world's greatest prank. Listen to this, okay? So, he's coming home from work, and I text him something. Kind of sexy, you know? So he texts me back something just a little risque. 
So I text him back something a little sexier. And he texts me back something a little more risque. So then I text him something really sexy. And he texts me back something really risque. And about that time he gets home, he jumps out of the truck, he runs into the house, he lays one on him, on me, and I tell him, honey, you're gonna be so mad at me. I lost my phone today. <laughs> so, let's see, that's enough picking on my husband. We're in a, we're in an election year this year, you know? And everybody up here has been talking about like racist issues and things like that. And I gotta tell you, when my daughter was little, I decided I wasn't gonna teach her about different cultures. I was gonna let her figure it out, who it was and what they, what they were like. You know, we weren't gonna put labels on anything. We weren't gonna do that. So everybody in her life was either brown or orange. Yeah, like Hispanics and African Americans, they were brown and Asians and Caucasians, they were orange. Now little did we know that we would fast forward and that that, that was a, a bit of foreshadowing and that we would one day have an orange president. <laughs> so, but you know, the problem with the world, in my opinion, is my generation, you know? Because I can remember sitting in college going, what can we do? What can we do to make the world a better place? What can we do to improve this world that we live in? And what did we teach you to do? Take another bong hit. Right. You guys have been great. I'm Connie and BC. Thank you. Connie and BC. No, I'm just fucking with you, Connie. Give it up for Connie one more time, please. Woo! I feel like we could start a Netflix show about her and how she's selling weed to like middle schoolers. You know what I'm saying? Like, she gives me that kind of vibe. Thank you, Connie, for coming up here and breaking all the white women cliches and also strengthening all the white women cliches at the same time, Connie. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna bring up 